Hi, this is Helena with Volcar San Diego, and today we are visiting Team Touche Fencing Club. I'm speaking with David Drake, who is veteran foil fencer. David, how long have you been a fencing? Well, in about uh, four months, it'll be 40 years. Wow. So, could you tell us your experience? Oh, let's see. Um, well, uh, I have spent uh, my first years, I was fencing in college, and when I came out of that, I moved to uh, Boston, and I fenced there for eight years under Ed Richards, an Olympian, and he basically taught me the game all over again. And from there, I moved to San Diego, and I have been fencing at the national level, uh, basically since I've been at the, turned 40. So for uh, the last 17 years or so, I've been uh, really at the top of my game. So David, I heard you have a national ranking in fencing, that's right? Yes, I do. Um, actually, in the last North Atlantic circuit, I took seventh place at a national level. Oh, it's awesome. So tell us something more about tournaments. Oh, well, it, it takes quite a while to practice for them. We practice uh, somewhere between four to six nights a week. And um, when you go to a tournament, um, it, uh, tournaments last about 10 hours. But they can be quite long. Um, the major tournaments are North Atlantic Circuits, which are held in various places in the U.S. And the other major tournaments have been um, in uh, Las Vegas, uh, L.A., um, and... Uh, San Francisco. So tell me a little bit about the history of fencing. Sure. Um, fencing really goes all the way back to the Egyptians where there was stick fighting and fighting with metals, uh, metal weapons. And um, as it has progressed, we've really gotten down to two different types of weapons. One is a sort of a, a poking weapon or stabbing weapon. And the other is a slashing or cutting weapon. And the, uh, there's a modern interpretation of these, uh, the FA, which is a large uh, pointed weapon, and um, a smaller one called a foil, which is also a poking weapon, but it originally came from a practice weapon. But the last is saber, and it's unique because you can actually score with the cutting edge. You can actually uh, hit with the edge of it and score a touch. It sounds interesting. Can you show us a different types of weapons? This is the F.A. As you can see, the, uh, this part called the bell is fairly large, and it has a sturdy um, uh, blade on it. And you can tell from the tip that it's a pointed weapon because you have to press this button to actually score a touch. The touch can be scored on any part of the body, all the way from the top of the head down to the tip of the toe. The next weapon, is the foil. You'll see that the bell is much smaller and it's a lighter blade. This also has a button on the tip. It has tape. It's a little beat up because of uh, all of the fencing I've been doing. The tape is needed because you wear a metallic vest that uh, allows the score to only happen on the body, not on the legs of the arms or the head. The last is the saber. The saber has a very different handle. It has this wraparound part to protect your hand, and it has a flexible blade that you can score with the side of it. Matter of fact, it has no button at all. Um, it, it's only folded over to make sure for protection that it doesn't uh, actually do any damage. But in fact, uh, the saber is a rather unique weapon in that you, all you need to do is touch your opponent anywhere from the hips up. They are heavy. Not really, they're less than a pound, but to actually move them quickly does require some strength. Um, fencers tend to be strong more in their legs. In other words, from the hips down is where their strength is. They tend to be smaller from the hips up. Can I try? Absolutely. They're really not heavy? No, they're not that heavy at all. Cool, thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. We learned quite a bit here. Sounds like fun. Let's try it. Sure, let's go.
Here you go.